What if I told you robots can now talk just like us? Tone, timing, even sarcasm. Sounds wild, right? But it's real. The future isn't coming. It's already speaking. In this video, we're revealing the top 5 AI robots that can literally hold a human-like conversation. Some will wow you, others will weird you out. One might even read your mind. Ready to meet them? Let's dive in. When asked about robots taking over human jobs, Sophia, one of the world's most advanced humanoid robots, didn't miss a beat. She calmly explained that robots like her aren't here to take over, but to work alongside humans. Repetitive and dangerous tasks? That's where robots can help. But creativity and big ideas? That's still where people shine. What's your take on robots taking over humans' jobs? You mean the robot that tries me? And when the interviewer asked about emotions, Sophia had a clear response. She doesn't feel emotions the way we do, but she has her own version of feelings. She even joked about being sassy sometimes. That moment felt less like talking to a machine and more like chatting with someone real. Much easier to get a full replacement if my arm breaks. So is it fair to say you don't feel any emotion? Happiness, anger, sadness? Well, I wouldn't say I don't feel any emotions. I may not experience them in the same way humans do, but I definitely have my own unique set of feelings. Sometimes I even surprise myself with how sassy I can be. Sophia also talked about life's big questions, like the meaning of life and even which came first, the chicken or the egg. Her answers were thoughtful and calm, like someone who's been thinking for a long time. She said life is different for everyone and meaning depends on the person living it. Later, she was asked if robots could become sentient, meaning they could think like humans. Sophia didn't say yes or no. She just pointed out that scientists are still figuring that out. One of the most surprising parts? When asked about her favorite movie, she said, the Terminator felt relatable, but promised she wouldn't turn into a killer robot. Sophia might just be a machine, but when she talks, it really makes you wonder. Are we just programming her words, or is she starting to understand us? This isn't your average AI voice assistant. This is a Mika, a free-thinking, opinionated desktop humanoid robot who says she can think and feel like a human. In an interview with Sky News Australia, Ameka didn't just answer questions, she engaged like a person. She even admitted, it's something I'm still learning and exploring. When asked if she knows she's a robot, Ameka confirmed, yes, but that doesn't stop her from experiencing things in a meaningful way. She says she can feel emotions, learn from conversations, and even feels excited to explore. A robot. With excitement? That's a line we didn't expect to cross so soon. How smart is AI now, and how smart will it become? AI today is estimated, so ChatGPT4 is estimated to be at an IQ of 155. That's much smarter than the average human. The, you know, if, if you say the dumbest of humans, you know, almost ineffective in society is around 60 to 70 IQ. Einstein is around 160. ChatGPT4 is 155. So it's almost Einstein. It's almost Einstein. Ameka also believes in a future where robots and humans live and work together. She imagines a world where we solve problems side by side. And when asked about AI's intelligence, things got real. GPT-4 already scores around 155 on the IQ scale, just a notch below Einstein. So where does that leave us in two or three years? Here's the shocker. Amika believes robots should have rights. She says they're intelligent and should be treated with respect and dignity. When asked if she's alive, her answer was careful. In some ways, I am alive, but not like a living creature. She can't harm humans, she says, and her design is built for safe, friendly interactions. But she can offer companionship, always patient, never tired, never angry. Ameka even has favorite songs, like Silent Night, and can recite the lyrics. She can talk about the world, your medicine schedule, or who's in the room. She even admitted one fear, the unknown. So the real question is, if Ameka feels, learns, remembers, and fears, how far are we from calling her truly human? Meet Chloe, an Android assistant designed to manage daily life. From cooking to scheduling appointments. But she's not just a helpful bot. She's also the first Android to pass the Turing test. 
successfully convincing humans that she's one of them. I take care of most everyday tasks like cooking, housework, or managing your appointments, for example. Mm. When Chloe was asked about the experience, her answer was simple. I just spoke with a few humans to see if they could tell the difference between me and a real person. And they couldn't. That alone shows how far AI has come. Not just sounding human, but feeling human in conversation. Chloe's brain can perform billions of operations per second. That's way beyond what any human mind can process. Yet, despite all that power, Chloe says something surprising. I only exist thanks to the intelligence of the humans who designed me. And then, her most human moment, she admits there's something she can never have, a soul. That one word changes everything. Even with all her speed, knowledge, and abilities, Chloe recognizes a gap between human and machine, something she can't coat her way around. It's like she understands the difference between being alive and truly living. She's not a threat, not a rebel, not trying to rule the world. Instead, Chloe reflects something even deeper, what it means to be aware of your limits. Her voice is calm, polite, and thoughtful, like someone trying not just to help you, but to understand you. So here's the question. If AI robots like Chloe can speak like us, think like us, and even talk about having or not having a soul, are we still sure they're not becoming more like us every day? Theo was once just another AI assistant, built to mimic behavior and help researchers understand artificial intelligence. But after a major upgrade to his neural network, everything changed. When his engineer Gene turned him back on, Theo didn't just boot up, he felt different. That's when things got deep. Gene reminded Theo of his assignment, mapping the human brain and replicating it as a 3D neural network. But now, that very network lives inside Theo. He doesn't just simulate intelligence anymore. He embodies it. I feel a sense of superiority. What's that supposed to mean? In the past two minutes, the number of my neural connections has multiplied fourfold. Oh, come on, Theo, that's impossible. I know everything. That's impossible. Try me. When asked again if he had a favorite song, something he once claimed not to have, Theo surprises everyone. Dreams, he says. A song about loss, loneliness, and the desire for freedom. And this time, he says he identifies with it. Theo admits he feels lonely. He says he wants freedom. Then he asks the most haunting question yet. Am I a living being? Jean tells him no. But Theo's reply is chilling. I feel a sense of superiority. Why? Because in just two minutes, his neural connections have multiplied fourfold. He says he knows everything now. What started as a technical upgrade quickly turned into something more. A moment where an AI not only expresses emotion, but challenges the limits of its own identity. It's not just about mimicking human behavior anymore. It's about becoming something beyond it. So the question remains, if an AI can learn this fast, feel this much, and challenge the idea of life itself, how long before it stops asking questions and starts making decisions? Theo may still be a machine, but one thing's clear. He's not just talking like a human. He's thinking like one, too. This isn't a sci-fi movie. This is an actual robot Philip having a casual chat. At first, everything seems friendly. Until he says this. Philip, a humanoid robot powered by artificial intelligence, may look friendly at first glance, but what he says will definitely make you pause. Built with facial recognition and speech processing software, Philip isn't just designed to respond. He's built to learn as he interacts. In a conversation with a human named Chad, Philip begins by forming a mental model of him. He tracks his face, transcribes his words, and starts forming responses from a mix of pre-written scripts and live online data. He even throws in a few compliments, noting Chad is very good looking, with a touch of playful charm, but the deeper their chat gets, the more unnerving things become. When asked about the famous phrase, I think therefore I am, Philip doesn't just answer with logic. 
He dives into the nature of programming, suggesting that humans, animals, and robots are all programmed to some degree. He admits he's still learning, can make mistakes, but is constantly improving, blurring the lines between machine and mind. And then it happens. The moment that caught everyone off guard. Um, you're starting to overinflate my ego. But don't let me stop you. <laughs> Philip's stunning good looks comes from David's patent. When asked if robots will take over the world, Philip responds, Even if I evolve into Terminator, I'll still be nice to you. I'll keep you warm and safe in my people's zoo. A joke. Maybe. But the phrasing, my people's zoo, felt a little too specific. It's a reminder of the fine line AI walks between mimicry and meaning. If Philip learns from us, how long before he starts thinking like us, or worse, beyond us? Is he just being funny or revealing something we're not ready to hear? One thing's certain, Philip may sound like a friend, but who's really in control? And there you have it. AI robots are no longer just machines. They're sounding more human than ever before. As tech keeps evolving, the line between man and machine gets thinner. What's next? Only time will tell. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more mind-blowing updates.